Hello and welcome to Verbal to Visual. In this video, I'm going to share with you how I use the app concepts for some live sketch noting during Zoom calls that I host and facilitate. I'll walk you through all the tools that I use, show you a couple of example projects here, starting with this one, a mastermind session that I hosted within Verbal to Visual for folks that are developing and using their sketch noting skills. So with this work in particular here, I'm doing live sketch noting I don't know what's gonna come up in the conversation and that's why I like concepts as a tool because of how it's designed for quick sketching not fancy illustrations but just getting down and then working with ideas so what you can see here are the handful of folks that hopped on during this call to share what they're working on for privacy I erased where their names went inside of that yellow highlighter there and during the conversation, I do real quick sketching. I rely a lot on simple icons and mind maps, short words and phrases, just to make connections between what's being shared, perhaps the, the questions that come up, diagrams whenever possible, both to serve as a little bit of a recap of the conversation for folks who missed it or folks who wanna review whatever we talked about, but then also to serve a purpose during the conversation itself. If we want to refer back to something that someone said 20, 30, 40 minutes ago. And then in this case, it was only at the end of the conversation that I added those kind of background shading to group the section of ideas for each person that hopped on and shared. So now that you've seen this as the result of a 90 minute chat talking about sketch noting and sketch noting related projects. Let me walk you through the tools that actually allow me to create something like this on the fly. As you can see here, I like having my toolbar off to the left. And what I'll do here is pretend that a new person is coming on to share here. So once someone hops on to start sharing what they're up to, I'll write their name down, switch to my highlighter pen to include a little bit of a background there and what allow what you notice there is that like I can make marks with this pen switch over to the highlighter and it automatically goes into the background that is because I have automatic layering turned on here so you can assign each brush that you create to a different layer so you'll notice that these top four, they're actually all the same brush. They're this kind of like gel pen feel that I've created. Same brush, just different colors. So those all show up on the same layer. And then these two here, the gray and yellow, those are both highlighters. And you'll notice that those live on a layer right below these kind of gel pen marks. So if I switch to gray, that'll go behind same with yellow so that's a nice way to be able to highlight something add some emphasis to any of the words or drawings that you're adding to your sketch the same goes for the last tool here which is the fill tool if i remember the name correctly yeah i'll show you the other two brushes that i've created as well so this is a fill tool it's similar to kind of the highlighter that i shared there um, in that it can, um, you know, it can create a, a filled shape, whatever mark you, uh, whatever mark you make, it'll, it'll just fill it. Um, and I have the settings set to, for this one, be 30% opacity, just since I'm using it to kind of group these ideas in the background, I don't want it to kind of outshine the other marks. So that keeps it plenty in the background there. So you, you notice there, you can kind of pull out the, the details of any of these uh, particular tools that you have here, or by kind of swiping to the left, you can hide that so that all those details kind of fade into the background. Let me show you the, these four tools here, which is all the same brush. This is actually a custom brush that I created. I made a video about this a while back what I like about concepts and a lot of the kind of sketching and illustration apps out there is you can create your own custom brushes. And that's what I did both for what I'm calling the core font here and the highlighter. These are um, two custom brushes that I created. 
and you'll notice there's a button here, edit core font, if you want to kind of dig into the details. And here's a quick look if you want to recreate that brush that I created. I'm using the stamp type. I've got a few size presets that I created there. A little bit of pressure variation so that higher pressure makes larger marks. I like that feel. I don't think I have, I guess I have a tiny bit of tilt variation and zero velocity variation. 100% opacity, no opacity variance, no smoothness, no shaping variance. I feel like some of these settings are even uh, newer compared to when I first created this brush, but you can see there's lots of customization that you can do. And I have auto layering turned on here, uh, assigned to a layer called core font. So that's the core font brush. Let's take a look at the highlighter brush, edit highlighter. Here I'm using the reveal brush type. Again, some slightly larger size presets here. Not as much pressure variation with this one, just a tiny bit. Opacity set to 50% because I wanted to have that faded look to it. And I think that's about it really. Got auto layering turned on, assigned to a layer called highlighter. And then I also do have this eraser handy here if I wanna make small uh, adjustments to any of the things that I write or draw. I also use for my finger, the setting I have is that if I tap and hold, it turns into this lasso tool so that I can select any portion of the notes, move them around or delete them entirely. I end up using that a lot, mostly to reorganize ideas as I'm sketching them out, to put ideas that are related next to each other, or even as a conversation evolves, just to kind of help group and space the contributions from different members of that conversation. And you can control that within the settings by tapping the gear icon in the upper right, where you can see I've got a plain white background, I've got a dot grid turned on. I do enjoy having that light dot grid that you can um, oftentimes barely see just to help write consistently, you know, not drift up or down, helps you draw straight lines whenever you want to draw straight lines. Um, but what I like about dot grid is that it easily fades into the background when you don't want to pay attention to those marks. I've got my artboard size set to infinite. It's another reason I like concepts. You can grow a mind map as large as you need it to be. You'll never run out of room. Then if we look at the stylus settings here, I've got pressure response from zero to 100. I have a finger action set to pan canvas. So if I just do a, a quick tap with my finger, it will pan around the canvas. But once you get to gestures, this is where you can do some more dynamic things. First of all, you'll notice that I have canvas rotation turned off because I do enjoy using two fingers to be able to zoom in and out. But with the way that I draw and write, I never want the canvas itself to rotate. That's something that you'll see a lot of illustrators use, rotating the canvas to be able to draw a particular section of the illustration more easily. I like keeping the orientation always the same when sketch noting, so I always have that turned off. Then you'll notice that tap and hold is set to lasso. And you can even play around with what the delay is for it to recognize that you want the lasso tool as opposed to the panning tool. I have two finger taps set to undo, three finger taps set to redo, and it looks like I'm not using the four finger tap for anything. So these are the types of settings that are worth paying attention to and incorporating into your workflow because they can really speed up the sketchnoting process once they become intuitive and second nature, which for me, since I host these conversations every week inside of Verbal to Visual, I consider each of those workshops really just an opportunity for me to practice my own live sketchnoting. And over time, that's what has kind of ingrained these particular processes of tap and hold to move, double tap to undo, three finger tap to redo. I've become very comfortable with the tools that I use over here, all these different marks. And you'll even notice that um, for these live conversations, I really pretty much um, never use, let's see, 
or at least very rarely use anything other than the black core font brush there when I'm writing and drawing. You'll see a little bit of uh, using the, the lighter gray here for drawing containers or making those connection arrows there. That helps provide a little bit of contrast to the notes. So really I'm just using the black for writing and drawing, the gray for arrows and containers, yellow for highlighting names, in other examples, I do some other highlighting throughout the sketch note. And then at the end of the conversation, the fill tool to kind of group connected ideas. In this case, the idea is shared by an individual person. Here's one other example just to show you what a different conversation looked like. Uh, another mastermind session. With this one, I didn't end up using that fill tool to group the contributions from different members because sometimes there are there's more um, kind of cross pollination or more connection of ideas. They're not quite siloed based on the person that's sharing, which you see a little bit of here. So in this case, these have much more of a kind of like mind map feel to them. Again, relying a lot on quick icons, simple connections. In this case, a bit more highlighting than in that other example. Nothing too complicated, just enough to give us a reference while chatting about these ideas and then to give a bit of a recap after the fact to remind us of the topics that we explored. Here you can see maybe a little bit more variation in thickness of the marks, particularly that stuck from unstuck. That was a kind of question that came in here, how to make that transition when you're feeling stuck. And that's where the pressure sensitivity of that core font tool comes in. So if I'm writing very lightly, it looks like this. But then if I add more pressure, you can get all the way to something like this. So that's a nice way to add some variation to the size of your marks to make certain words or drawings stand out over others. Don't need this here though, so we will delete it. And you'll notice as I zoom in and zoom out in the upper right there, you can see the percentage of the zoom. And while it's an infinite canvas app, it's not quite an infinite zoom app. Pretty darn close though, as far as I'm concerned. You can zoom out all the way to 10%, and then you can zoom in all the way to 1600%. That's plenty of zoom for my needs. And I never even look at that number while I'm actively sketchnoting. It's more kind of intuitive. I have a feel at this point for how zoomed in I want to be when I'm writing or drawing. Typically it's something around like this when I'm making marks and then I'll zoom out either to kind of pan over to a free part of the canvas if someone else is about to share, or if I want to do any sort of rearranging of ideas. That's what I do at the zoomed out setting somewhere like this, where I can select, you know, chunks of the sketch note if I need to move them around. And then if more ideas come up, zoom in real easily and then keep drawing and writing. So I hope that was helpful to see what my process looks like within concepts, get a sense for the tools that I use and how I use them. I try to keep my approach fairly simple and lightweight so that I can move quickly during these conversations. I don't worry about capturing every single thing that comes up, but just enough of the details, enough of the interesting points, the interesting questions in order to support the particular person that's hopping on to share what they're working on, but also maybe provide some interesting nuggets for others that either are joining that call live, watching the replay, or even just taking a quick look at these sketch notes after the fact. If you're interested in diving deeper into this topic of digital sketch noting using some combination of whatever tablet you've got, one of the many great apps out there in order to take visual notes. We've got a course inside of Verbal to Visual that addresses all of those skills called digital sketch noting. And over the next few weeks here, I'm going to be releasing new video lessons for that course, which I'm super excited about. 
as well as hosting some live events in connection with those new lessons. This video here is actually an example of the capstone project for that course. After I help you explore the different apps that are out there and then decide how to use the common features available within any sketching app and how to weave those features into your own customized sketchnoting process, I encourage folks to share their own walkthrough of the app that they choose to use, to share some of their sketch notes, identify what tools they use and how they use them. I think that'll be a great way for folks who work their way through that course to summarize what they learned. And then also those walkthroughs will make for a really cool resource for new folks that are just getting started to get a feel for the different apps that they might use and how they might use them. So if you would like to check out those new lessons, join us for those upcoming live calls and see some demos of other apps and what folks are doing with them, come join us inside of Verbal to Visual. You can learn more and sign up at verbaltovisual.com, which I will also link to down in the description below. Thank you so much for watching. Hope this was useful and I'll see you again soon. Till next time.